Hi friends, today I am giving a lecture on spanning subgraph. Spanning subgraph is one type of graph in graph theory. In the previous videos, we are already discussed about uh, what is a subgraph and what are the examples of subgraph. So, to understand the spanning subgraph, you should understand the concept of subgraph. Once you understand the subgraph topic, then it is very easy to understand the spanning subgraph. Okay. So, in the brief way, I am discussing about uh, what is a subgraph when we can say that a graph is a subgraph of G. Okay, I am explaining with one example. After explaining the subgraph concept, then we can go for a spanning subgraph. Okay, so now I am taking a graph. So that graph is denoted by so G of V comma E. Okay, here V is nothing but set of vertices. So, that are A, B, C, D. Okay. So, B is nothing but set of vertices. So, that is a set of A comma B comma C comma D. And E is nothing but set of edges. So, set of A comma B, B comma D, C comma D, B comma C, A comma D and A comma C. So, V is nothing but set of vertices set of A comma B comma C comma D and E is nothing but set of edges. So that is set of A comma B, B comma D, C comma D, A comma C, A comma D, B comma C. Okay. Now I am taking another graph. This is another graph. Okay. So this is vertex A. This is a B and this is a C and this is a D. This graph is denoted by G1 of V1, comma E1. Okay. So V1 is nothing but set of vertices present in graph G1. That is a set of A, comma B, comma C, comma D. And E1 is nothing but set of edges present in graph G1. That is a set of A, comma B. B comma D, C comma D and D comma C. Now, when we can say that G1 is a subgraph of G. Okay. So, G1 is a subgraph of G if and only if it satisfies two conditions. The first condition is all the vertices and edges present in G1 should be there in G. That is the first condition. Second condition, so whatever the edges present in G1, the edges and vertices, whatever the end vertices for all the edges in G1 is also there in G. So if it satisfies two conditions, then we can say that G1 is a subgraph of G. Okay, we have to verify the first condition is a satisfied or not. Okay. Now, how many number of vertices present in G1? That is 4 vertices. We have to verify whether G contains these 4 vertices or not. Here A is same as A. But here vertex A is there. Here vertex A is also there. Here vertex B is there. Here vertex B is also there. Here vertex C is there, here vertex C is also there. Here vertex D is there, here vertex D is also there. Okay, so the vertices present in G1 is also there in G. Okay, now edges. So A comma B is there in G1, here A comma B is also there in G. Next B comma C is there in G1, here B comma C is also there in G. Next, B comma D is there in G1. Here, B comma D edge is also there in G. Next, C comma D edge is there in G1. Here, C comma D edge is also there in G. 
Okay, the first condition is satisfied. All the vertices present, all the vertices and edges present in G1 should be there in G. Okay, the first condition is satisfied. Now we have to verify the second condition. So now we can take the first edge A comma B. What are the end vertices of this edge? Here A, here B. So now consider this edge. Okay, what are the end vertices are there for this edge? So here A, here B. Okay, so suppose this is E1 edge. This is also E1 edge. The same end vertices for edge E1 in G1 should be also there in G. Okay, next one. Now we can go for second edge uh, B comma C. Okay, the edge E2 is formed with two end vertices B and C. Okay, so the same edge should be there in G with the same end vertices or not. So here B comma C edge is there, that edge is E2. E2 has the uh, two end vertices B and C. Okay, so the second edge is also there in G. Next, third edge E3 with the end vertices B and D. Okay, so the same edge is also there with the two end vertices B and G in G. Okay, next. Uh, here E4 edge with the end vertices C and D. Here also E4 edge with the two end vertices C and G. Okay. So here four edges with the end vertices in G1. The same edges with the same end vertices is also there in G. Hence we can say that by satisfying these two conditions, we can say that G1 is a subgraph of G. So G1 is a subgraph of G if all the vertices and edges present in G1 is also same as there in G. Second condition, we can take any edge from G1 with the same end vertices should be also there with the same end vertices with the same edge in G. By satisfying these two conditions, G1 is a subgraph of G. Okay. Now, now we can go for uh, uh, another definition, spanning subgraph. Okay. So here, this is a graph G and this is a subgraph of G that is a G1. Okay. So when we can say that G1 is a subgraph of G. First of all, to become the spanning subgraph of G, okay, it should be a subgraph of G. Okay, to become the spanning subgraph G1, okay, G1 should be a subgraph of G. Okay, so the first condition is when we can say that a graph is a subgraph of G. A graph G1 is a subgraph of G. Okay. So, sorry. When we can say that G1 is a subgraph of, spanning subgraph of G. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So when we can say that G1 is a spanning subgraph of G. Okay. First of all, G1 is a subgraph of G. This condition should be necessary. Okay. Once it is a sub, G1 is a subgraph of G. Now we have to verify in G1, whatever the vertices present in G1, the same vertices is also there in G. Okay. Then G1 is a spanning subgraph of G. Okay. So, G1 is a spanning subgraph of G. First of all, G1 is a subgraph of G. Once we have to verify that G1 is a subgraph of G, now we have to verify that G1 is a sub spanning subgraph of G or not. Okay. So, whatever the vertices present in G1, okay, 
the same vertices must and should be there like as in G. Okay. Hence, we can say that G1 is a spanning subgraph of G. Okay. Here, in the case of spanning subgraph, we do not consider the edges concept. Okay. We are concentrate only on the vertices. Okay. Whatever the vertices present in G1. Okay. These all vertices should be there in G. Hence, we can say that G1 is a spanning subgraph of G. Okay. So, now we can go to this example. Okay. So, this is the given graph and these are the spanning subgraphs. Okay. We have to verify that. Once we are understanding these examples, then we can go for the definition. Okay. So, here this is one spanning subgraph of this graph, this is one spanning subgraph of this graph, this is one spanning subgraph of this graph. Okay, first we have to verify this one, whether this is a spanning subgraph of this one or not. Okay, so what are the vertices present in this one? So, A, B, C, D. Okay, these four vertices should be there in G. Yes, A, B, C, D. Four vertices present in this one. Okay. Next one. What are the edges present in G1? A, B, B, C, C, B, D and C, D. These edges should be there in G compulsory. Here A, B is there. B, C is there. B, D is there. C, D is there. Okay. All the vertices present in G. G1 should be there in G. All the edges present in G1 should be there in uh, G. And end vertices of the edges A comma B. So this edge has the end vertices A comma B. So here this edge has the same end vertices in G. Okay. Here B comma C. This edge has the end vertices B comma G. The same edge has the end vertices B comma C in G. Next, this edge has the end vertices B comma D. So, the same edge has the end vertices B comma D in G. This edge has the end vertices C comma D. The same edge has the end vertices C comma D. Okay. So, now we can say that this is a subgraph of this graph. This is a subgraph of this graph. Okay. Now we have to verify that whether it is a spanning subgraph or not. To become this graph is a spanning subgraph of this graph. It should contain whatever the vertices. Okay. The same vertices should be there in G. Here A, B, C, D. Here A, B, C, D is there. Okay. Hence we can say that this graph is a spanning subgraph of this graph. Okay. We do not bother about the edges. Only whatever the edges present in this graph, the same vertices should be there in G. Hence we can say that this graph is a spanning subgraph of this graph. Okay. Next, we can go for this one. Okay. So, here A, B, C, D. Four vertices are there. These four vertices should be there in G. Yes, four vertices should be there in G. Hence, we can say that this is a spanning subgraph. Okay. Now, now consider this one. Okay. How many number of vertices are there? Four vertices A, B, C, D. The same vertices should be there in G. Hence, we can say that this is a spanning subgraph. Okay. So, to become the spanning subgraph, first of all, it is a subgraph. Once it is a subgraph, then we have to verify that whether it is a spanning subgraph or not. Okay. To become the spanning subgraph, what are the vertices present in the subgraph? The same vertices should be there in the uh, main graph G. Hence, we can say that, so this is a subgraph of, spanning subgraph of G. So, these three are called as spanning subgraph of this graph. Okay. Now, 
Now we can go for uh, this example. Okay. So this graph is a uh, spanning subgraph of this graph or not. Okay. First of all, it is a subgraph or not. Okay. To become the subgraph, first of all, what are the vertices and edges present in this subgraph, in this graph, should be also there in graph G. Okay. Here, how many number of vertices are there? B, C, D. Three vertices are there. But the main graph contains four vertices. Okay. Four vertices. Okay. So, this condition is not satisfied. So, here, vertex A is missing. Vertex A is missing. Okay. If any vertex is missing in the subgraph or spanning subgraph, okay, like as in same graph G, so hence we can say that this is not a spanning subgraph, okay. Next one, but it is a subgraph, but it is a subgraph because, so here three vertices are there, B, C, D, the three vertices should be there in G, yes. B, C, D is there. What are the end vertices? B, C for this edge. B, C is there. The same edge is also there with the same end vertices. B, C. Here B, D is there. The same end vertices for this edge. B, D is there. For this edge, C, D is there. So the same edge is also there in G. Okay. So. It is a subgraph because it satisfies the uh, definition of the subgraph. But it is not a spanning subgraph because whatever the uh, vertices present in the main graph, the same vertices should not be there in the subgraph. So hence we can say that it is not a spanning subgraph because vertex A is missing. Okay. And uh, this is a subgraph because three vertices present in the subgraph. So here also three, these same three vertices should be there in this graph. Okay. So here, uh, what are the end vertices for this edge, this edge and this edge? The same end vertices is also there in uh, main graph G. But it is not a spanning subgraph because in the main graph G, four vertices are there, but in this uh, subgraph, four vertices are not there. So here, vertex D is missing. Vertex D is missing. So hence, we can say that it is not a spanning subgraph of this graph. Okay, so these three are the spanning subgraph of this graph. But these two graphs are not spanning subgraphs because in this graph vertex A is missing. In this graph vertex D is missing. To become the spanning subgraph, whatever the vertices present in the main graph G, the same vertices should be there in the uh, spanning sub uh, in the subgraph G1. Okay. So, here vertex A is missing, here vertex D is missing. Hence, we can say that these two are not called the spanning subgraph of this graph. These three are called the spanning subgraph of this graph. Okay. So, this is the introduction about the spanning subgraph. So, thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please share this video to your friends and classmates. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel name. Divela Srinivasa Rao. In the next video, we can go for uh, induced subgraph. Okay.